Have you ever questioned the very nature of your existence? In the realm of philosophical inquiry, one name stands out, René Descartes. The French philosopher, mathematician and scientist Descartes is often hailed as the father of modern philosophy. His seminal work, Meditations on First Philosophy, is a testament to his relentless pursuit of truth, a quest that led him to question everything, including his very existence. In this book, Descartes embarks on a journey, a meditation if you will, that seeks to debunk all preconceived notions and beliefs, leaving behind only the undoubtable truths. His work is not merely a philosophical treatise, but a profound exploration of human cognition and our understanding of reality. Descartes' Meditations is a cornerstone in the edifice of Western philosophy, its influence echoing through centuries. It's a work that pushes us to question, to doubt, to think. Dive with me into the depths of Descartes' mind as we explore his meditations. Descartes begins his journey with doubt. Now this isn't your typical, everyday doubt. This is radical doubt, a method Descartes uses to question everything he knows to be true. It's a clean slate, a reset button on his beliefs, a fresh start to his understanding of reality. In his first meditation, Descartes takes us on this journey of doubt. He starts by doubting the most basic of truths, the physical world around him. Is what we perceive through our senses really real? Or are they mere illusions, hallucinations or dreams? But Descartes doesn't stop there. He pushes the envelope even further, doubting even the mathematical truths. Could it be possible that 2 plus 3 doesn't equal 5? You see, Descartes' doubt is not about being a skeptic for skepticism's sake. It's about deconstructing everything he knows, to reconstruct it on a firmer foundation. It's about finding an indubitable truth, a truth so certain, so undeniable, that it can withstand even the most rigorous scrutiny. But why would Descartes choose to doubt everything? Well, it's a bit like building a house. If the foundation is shaky, the whole house could collapse. So, Descartes decides to demolish the house of knowledge he has built over the years, to start anew on a solid foundation. This journey of radical doubt is a daring one. It's uncomfortable, unsettling even. Imagine questioning everything you know to be true. But Descartes is willing to take that risk to brave that discomfort. Because in his view, the pursuit of truth is worth it. It's important to note that this first meditation is not an end in itself, but a means to an end. It's the first step in Descartes' philosophical journey, a stepping stone to the meditations that follow. In doubting everything, Descartes sets the stage for the meditations to follow. This act of doubting is not just about uncertainty, it's about possibility. It's about opening up a world of philosophical inquiry, a world where truth and certainty are attainable. And that's the beauty of Descartes' doubt. It's not just a beginning, it's a promise of what's to come. From the ashes of doubt, the cogito arises. As we venture into the second meditation of René Descartes' seminal work, Meditations on First Philosophy, we find ourselves face to face with one of philosophy's most iconic utterances. I think, therefore I am. In the first meditation, Descartes had cast doubt on all his beliefs, seeking a foundation of certainty. In the second meditation, he uncovers this certainty in the form of the cogito, the thinking self. The cogito is Descartes' response to the radical skepticism he introduced. It's an indubitable truth, a rock upon which he can build his philosophical edifice. You see, even if he doubts, even if he's deceived by a malicious demon, as he hypothesized in the first meditation, there's one thing Descartes cannot dispute. He must exist to be deceived. He must exist to doubt. I think, therefore I am. This statement, this cogito, is a beacon of certainty in an ocean of doubt. But what does this cogito, this thinking self, entail? Descartes insists that this self is not the body, not the senses, but the mind. It is a thinking thing, a conscious entity. This distinction between mind and body, or dualism, is a pervasive theme in Descartes' philosophy, and one that has sparked countless debates in the centuries since. But why does this matter? Why is the cogito significant? By establishing the certainty of his own existence, Descartes sets a benchmark for knowledge. He demonstrates that there are truths so evident, so undeniable, that they withstand even the most radical skepticism. This approach to philosophy 
This method of doubt becomes a cornerstone of modern philosophy, influencing thinkers from Spinoza to Kant. The cogito is more than a philosophical proposition. It's a testament to the power of human reasoning, a declaration of intellectual independence. It's a daring challenge to conventional wisdom and a call to question, to doubt, to think. And so, with the cogito, Descartes establishes the certainty of self-existence. It's a bold claim, yes, but one that has left an indelible mark on the trajectory of philosophical thought. Beyond the self, Descartes delves into the existence of God and the material world. This is where the third and subsequent meditations take us on an exploration, a quest for understanding that transcends our own existence. In the third meditation, Descartes presents his first proof of God's existence, based on the idea that our notion of a perfect being couldn't have originated from us. He reasons that something can't come from nothing, and an idea of a perfect being must have a cause at least as real as itself. Therefore, the idea of a perfect God, he argues, must have been caused by an actual perfect God. Moving on to the fourth meditation, Descartes grapples with the question of error. If God is perfect and not a deceiver, then why do we err? Descartes concludes that error is not a real thing, but rather a lack or privation, not something created by God, but something that occurs when we as finite beings go beyond our limits and make judgments about things we don't fully understand. In essence, our errors don't prove God's imperfection, but rather our own finitude. In the fifth meditation, Descartes provides another proof for God's existence, this time using the concept of clear and distinct ideas. He argues that the idea of God is clear and distinct in his mind, and that anything he perceives clearly and distinctly must be true. Therefore, God must exist. Descartes also introduces the idea that material objects could exist because he can clearly and distinctly understand them, but he suspends judgment until his arguments are more fully developed. Finally, in the sixth meditation, Descartes concludes that the material world exists. He argues that the sensory perceptions he has when awake are vivid and distinct, unlike those in dreams, which are often obscure and muddled. This, along with the understanding of God as a non-deceiver, leads him to the conclusion that the material world does indeed exist. He maintains that while the mind is better known than the body, it doesn't mean the body doesn't exist. Rather, the two are closely intertwined, forming a unity of a human being. These meditations from the third to the sixth build upon the conclusions of the first two meditations, presenting a philosophical system that begins with doubt, moves through self-understanding, and culminates in a proof of God's existence and the reality of the material world. Descartes' journey is not just a journey of the mind, but also of the heart, a search for truth and understanding that goes beyond the self to encompass God and the world around us. From the cogito to God and the material world, Descartes presents a comprehensive philosophical system, a system that continues to inspire, challenge and provoke thought centuries after its inception, a system that invites us to question, to wonder, and to seek truth in our own unique ways. Descartes' meditations have left an indelible mark on philosophy. With this seminal work, Descartes not only revolutionized the world of philosophy, but also laid the foundation for modern Western philosophy. His bold assertions and method of radical doubt challenge each of us to question our own realities. The meditations stand as a beacon, illuminating the path to profound philosophical inquiry. From the first meditation's exploration of doubt, through the cogito's assertion of existence, to the final reconciliation of God and the material world, Descartes' arguments are as impactful as they are thought-provoking. The influence of these meditations can be seen rippling through centuries of philosophical discourse, shaping our understanding of self, reality, and the divine. They challenge us to grapple with our perceptions, to question our beliefs, and to strive for a deeper understanding of our existence. In the spirit of Descartes' meditations, we're left with an invitation to intellectual adventure. Descartes invites us to question, to doubt, and to think, to seek truth in our own existence. Thank you for joining me on this philosophical journey. We've delved into the depths of Descartes' meditations on first philosophy, unearthing profound insights about doubt, the cogito, God, and the material world. But the conversation doesn't stop here. 
If you've enjoyed this exploration, I invite you to light up that like button. It's a small action that makes a big difference helping to share these philosophical musings with others who might be interested. And if you haven't done so already, do hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for more thought-provoking content. We've got a whole universe of ideas to explore together. Got a burning question or a reflection on the book? Drop a comment below. This is a community of thinkers and your thoughts matter. Remember, the journey of philosophy begins with a single thought. Until next time, keep questioning.